Hi, welcome to Movie Review Mom. I'm the mom and I do the reviews. If you've never been here before, be sure and subscribe and ring that little bell and it'll notify you every time I upload new movie reviews, which is almost every day now because so many movies are coming out, which is awesome. So today, the movie I'm reviewing is Girl. This is now available in theater starting November 20th and will be out on streaming pretty quickly. And that's the good thing about COVID. If you can say there's anything good about COVID, at least movie theaters are quickly moving to streaming so we don't have to wait forever like we used to. Now, let me tell you a little bit about this movie. It's rated R, it's 92 minutes long, and the movie review mom grade I'm giving it is a B. And I'll explain. First, let me give you a nutshell overview. I'll point out some themes, tips for parents, and things I liked and didn't like, as well as some recommendations at the end. All right, so in a nutshell, this this dramatic thriller is an official selection of the Fantastic Fest 2020 presented by Screen Media. And thank you, Screen Media, for giving me a screener so that I could preview it and share it with you now today. Chad Faust wrote it, directed it, and even stars in it. In Girl, a young woman played by Bella Thorne returns to her small hometown to exact revenge on her abusive father only to discover someone murdered him the day before. As the girl searches for answers, she soon finds herself prey to a sinister sheriff played by Mickey Rourke and uncovers a family legacy more disturbing than she had imagined. The director stated about this movie, quote, I wanted to make a film that questions the story that each of us has built our lives on. That's a really interesting premise. He says, what if that story isn't true? What if a young woman walked into a forgotten town with the blood of a false story pounding in her heart? My Imagine ran away until this young woman, this parallel existence of mine, lived in me like a little sister. This is her unusual journey through self-destruction and rage to find she is she has something to offer the world. We're all living in a generational cycle and that lineage lives within us. Like blood memory. I think that's such an interesting concept, blood memory. And he talks about that in the movie. It's a brave few who break that cycle of abuse and take personal responsibility for how they affect this world. To me, these few are the unsung heroes of humanity, end quote. Isn't that amazing? So, and by the way, speaking of lineage and family history, I have a free book to offer you. It's available for free on Amazon Kindle and it's called Ancestry, How to research your family history and climb your family tree. And it offers really cool stories of people who did just that, as well as helpful tips on how do you research your family history. Anyway, go ahead and grab it. There's a link also down below so that you can uh, click on it and snag your free gift before it goes away. Now, some tips for parents. There is murder and bloody gory deaths profanity, crude language, and plenty of F-bombs. You see a girl in a very thin t-shirt that shows her midriff, and you also see her kind of taking it off from behind. You get a tiny side angle view, so there's some skin there. Uh, violence, alcohol. This is not a kid's movie, and honestly, kids will mostly be bored anyway because it's one of those talking movies. There is some action, but it's not appropriate for our young children. Now, some themes that are worth talking about in the movie are inheritance, abuse, neglect, and not just physical abuse, but emotional abuse and neglect. Poverty, money, greed, the idea of potential money and how that can twist people into just crazy greed, inbreeding, corruption, family, intergenerational trauma, infidelity, lies, and power. Dun, dun, dun. I mean, that's a lot right there. Pretty heavy stuff.
Now, some things that I really liked about the movie are, first of all, Bella Thorne's performance. She is just stellar in this role, and she has really been cranking out some quality performances lately, but not one to rest on her laurels. Thorne's talent doesn't stop at just acting. She's a savvy businesswoman jumping on the CBD bandwagon, and she actually recently launched a cannabis business and CBD line called Forbidden Flowers which I actually think is a really clever word. Uh, she's an entrepreneur, singer, writer, an aspiring director. She wrote a best-selling book titled The Life of a Wannabe Mogul, Mental Disarray. She's really good at titles, I think. And she's also currently working in the studio on her new album, which is supposed to come out later 2020. Now, this is November, end of November. So I don't know if that means it's coming out in December. We'll see. But the whole cast really delivers and includes Mickey Rourke, who plays just this creepy guy, Lynette Ware, Glenn Gould, and Elizabeth Saunders. There's an effective musical score by Dylan Bout. Baldacero. And I always like to pay attention to the musical score. Sometimes it tells you what to think. And in this movie, I felt like it really accentuated what you were already feeling. And so I thought that that was really good. There are some interesting twists and reveals. And I really liked the symbol of a hatchet and holding a grudge. You know how we've heard the expression, bury the hatchet. Well, she's literally got a hatchet and there are several grudges in this movie that are portrayed. And so anyway, I just like that parallelism. The director did a really good job of painting the picture a very grim life in this creepy town <laughs> and this grim family and very grim characters. And you just, I wanted to take a shower afterwards. It's significant that the name of the girl is unknown. The name of the movie is Girl. And even in the credits for the movie, it doesn't give her a name. And I think it's appropriate because she doesn't really know who she is. She doesn't understand her own family history or even what she's capable of. And so I felt like that was appropriate. However, I also felt like the name of the movie could have also been appropriately titled Daddy's Girl or even Mama's Girl. But anyway, the unknown girl also represents all of the neglected, abused kids who are stuck in a cycle of poverty and abuse, kind of what the director was talking about in the comments that I just shared with you. And another thing I really liked is the color palette because it really gave you that feeling of grime and grit and dirt. And that's good because it illustrates the story even more. Now, there were only a couple of things that I didn't like about the movie. And first of all, I wanted everybody in the movie to take a shower because everybody was grimy and dirty. That's just silly because that's was the point of using all of that imagery, of course. There is a somewhat predictable ending, although there are some twists. Uh, I read a review where one critic said that he didn't feel like he had resolution. And there is a little bit of the ending that's up to interpretation. Um, I read it a certain way in my mind and I was satisfied with that ending. There are a couple of predictable, goofy action scenes or sequences. For example, when that hatchet is flying through the air and a bullet hits it, you know, and it's avoiding death of a particular person, or people are able to get away quickly, suddenly, in miraculous ways and that kind of stuff. But all in all, you know, it was still really fun and entertaining. Well, actually, I don't know if I'd use fun as the right word, but it was compelling and there was certainly tension. Whenever I watch movies, I always like to write down the lines that I think are funny or particularly insightful. And I include all of them on my movie review mom website where I have my written reviews. So you can check all of them out there, but I'll share a few of them with you right now. Uh, a funny line was spoken by the barkeep who's played by Ken Gould. And he says to Bella Thorne's character, you're the nicest person that probably came through here ever. And you're waving a hatchet around wanting to kill people, <laughs> which tells you how bad everybody else in the town is. 
And then another really interesting line and concept is spoken by Charmer, uh, who's played by Chad Faust, and he's a sleazy guy as well. And he says, you are what you are. And then another character says the same thing. And so I think that's worth talking about with whomever you watch the movie. Is that true? You are who you are. Can you change? And even though I didn't mention change when I was pointing out all of the themes, I think change is definitely a theme or a lesson or certainly a topic to discuss. Can people change for the better? Or are you what your genetics say that you are or that your family legacy says that you are? That kind of thing. So I think that that's super interesting. And then there's just this little interesting dialogue between two characters. So again, the barkeep is talking to Bella Thorne's character, girl, and he says, you know, it's a fine line between brave and stupid. So she thinks for a minute and then she says, it's a fine line between coward and smart. Dun, dun, dun. I, I won't spoil you with anything else. Now, my recommendation is just for another movie with Bella Thorne, if you really like her, she came out with another movie right as COVID was starting, really, that hit number one, probably because everybody was stuck at home uh, looking for something new to watch, but it's called Infamous. So you might want to check that out. And before I go, I just want to thank all of you who are going over to Patreon to help me continue offering these movie reviews, especially as my YouTube channel is new and still growing and I have a bunch of gifts that you can choose from and different tiers that you can select uh, as you decide what you'd like to donate. Anyway, I really appreciate that. All right. I hope that you enjoy this movie if you watch it and I will catch you in the next movie review. Until then, bye for now.